you guys are good? Alright. Front row people. Alright, thank you everyone for coming out tonight. Um, I am Molly. I'm a library assistant here at the library. Uh, this is Megan. She's the director of public works. So together we're going to help you answer a lot of the questions you may have about the Recycle Right program and the new recycling policy here with the town. So we're going to try to cover as much as we can and then we'll answer the questions at the end. There's a good chance that some of your questions may be answered, but sometimes those weird items do come up or the specific questions. Um, we're definitely going to leave time to answer those at the end. Uh, this afternoon we had a program and we had some pretty interesting questions that came up that I couldn't have imagined. Uh, so it'll be kind of fun to see, <coughs> see what you guys have in mind. Um, just to get a general idea, are most people here, you have more questions about the recycling program in general or about what items you can or cannot recycle? Who's here more for the items, specific items, and then general questions about recycling? Anybody here new to recycling? Never recycled before? Okay, awesome. All right, so I'm gonna start with just a little bit of an overview about what the Solid Waste Center does take and doesn't take. Um, some items are accepted with or without a fee. Other items have to be reserved and dropped off on specific days. Then we'll get into the recycling and kind of go over the basics of the program. One of the most useful things that we um, kind of your Bible through this whole thing is this handout. We've got a few of them over on the table here. A lot of the information in the PowerPoint is on the handout here, and it's really helpful to look at as we go along because many of your questions may be answered. There. So, Solid Waste Center, if you haven't been, it's at 100 Disciple Way. Um, they're open Tuesday through Saturdays. Megan was saying earlier that Saturdays tend to be one of the busier days, so if you're looking for a quieter day during the week with the recycling, um, maybe a better time. They also have a new website, Recycling Right, and an email. So specific questions that may come up, you can direct to that website or that email or phone number. They know that it's going to be a little bit of a transition for a lot of people, so DPW has really been working well at putting a lot of information out there and providing these contacts and these resources. So. No questions too strange. We've had a lot of um, pretty interesting questions that came up earlier. So the biggest thing to think about going into this is when in doubt, throw it out. There's some very specific rules for what items can or cannot be accepted. And if you're not sure, set it aside and contact them or ask an attendant at the service center or throw it out. Better to have the items thrown out than mixed in with the rest of the materials because it can contaminate the stream. We'll talk a little bit about that. But the contact that they have here, the website that they've been working on, has been really, really helpful, as well as these lists and these handouts that are available across the town. So real quick, materials that they do take at the Solid Waste Center. The two biggest categories are separated recyclables and household trash. Everything in addition to that that's accepted without a fee is what you can typically think of as waste generated by your home. So yard clippings, miscellaneous items, things that are probably around your house or around your property. Larger materials, residential construction, large appliances, those bigger items, concrete, um, any construction debris can be disposed of, but there is a fee that will apply. In the back of your recycling packet here, there is a fee schedule, so anything that's a little bit weird or unusual or that you're not sure about, uh, check the fee schedule because there may be specifics about those. Looking at the recycling and the household trash, it's pretty much, if it fits in a trash can, it's either household waste or recyclable with some exceptions, but for the most part, that's what we're going to be talking about today. There's some other exceptions that will apply to household hazardous waste, um, so that's products such as paint, cleaners, pesticides, lubricants, any of these you know, chemicals that you maybe wouldn't feel comfortable putting into your regular trash, they don't belong in the trash and they have to be disposed of um, in a very particular way. So there's a couple of facilities in New Hampshire that will take them on a pretty open basis. Guilford also does do a collection day, so if you have household hazardous waste or items that you think may be hazardous waste, don't put them in your household trash, don't throw them out, collect them in an area, and then you can bring them in on that day. 
Another item that comes up, um, came up earlier, is something like batteries or light bulbs. Both of these items are considered universal waste. They can be collected, but they have to be separated out from your household trash. So um, no matter what type of battery it is or light bulbs, if you bring them and set them aside, give them to a service attendant, and then they can dispose of them properly. Um, and there's a few other kind of items that fall into those categories, but again, if you have questions, it's best to set it aside or get in touch with the facility and um, somebody like Megan or somebody that's at the facility can answer your questions about those. So why is recycling mandatory? Mandatory recycling, what it does for a town this size is it significantly reduces the amount of household waste that's produced that needs to be then transferred and processed. The other good thing about recycling is that they're taking all of these materials that you're recycling and you're, they're being sold to specific vendors. Those specific vendors can then take those plastics, distribute them to be recycled into new products, repurposed. It's just continuing the life of those products by either reusing them or recycling them. And going through the different vendors is just a really good way to make sure that those materials are being redirected. Uh, it also reduces your environmental footprint. So that's a big concern of yours, being able to separate out your recyclables from your household trash um, is a huge, huge change in your household. Reduces the impact on taxes as well. If the town doesn't have to worry about so much municipal waste that has to be incinerated and transferred and processed, and instead can be earning money back from those recyclables, that's a really big impact and it's really positive for your taxes. So, I don't know if Megan wants to talk a little bit about the vendors, the vendor system. Yeah, um, so there were some questions earlier about what happens and who we sell things to. So, um, getting our facility up and running, um, we're utilizing NRRA, which is the Northeast Resource Recovery Association, and we use them as a a point of contact um, to get to other vendors so they go out and they do contracts and get try and get the best pricing in the area so you can use them to start or you can do your own research which we plan to do in time uh, to try and get the best prices to sell our products back so um, several of the products make good money some products do cost but it's it's much different than the cost of processing household trash so it's definitely a savings um, and the whole idea is keeping the products clean um, because you're trying to sell them, so you want your bales to be nice and clean and usable products. Uh, so the vendors um, we use, it's, some people asked about, is it all going to just one vendor? No. So the cardboard will go to one vendor, the aluminum cans will go to another. So different vendors are purchasing the different materials that we're going to be bailing at the, at the site. And that's why transferring, instead of doing a single stream system, which you may be used to, where you're just dumping all your recyclables into one bin and then it goes to the center, by Breaking it down and doing more of a separated system like this, it allows us to be able to take advantage of those vendors. So instead of having to employ people to then sort and then having to deal with all of this miscellaneous recycling that may come into play, you've got the option of being able to pick a cardboard vendor that's going to give you the best options, pick a steel vendor that's going to pay you the most. Um, so it just opens up the possibilities with that. It's a little bit more time, uh, but once you get organized, and I'm gonna share a couple of little tips on how you can reorganize your bins, it really just goes much quicker. Uh, and a big thing to remember too, when we're looking at the recycling is, just because an item is recyclable, doesn't necessarily mean that it's recyclable here in Guilford. Uh, so you may know that with the plastics, there's so many different types of plastics out there, not all plastics are going to be accepted here at this facility because of the way that the vendor licenses work and because of what they're looking for. So I've got listed up here and on your packet um, plastics. They're looking for number one, number two, number five, and number seven. So just because it has that little recycling marker, if it doesn't have one of those four numbers, they're not looking for it, and it's just going to end up complicating the process. So. If it's not marked or it's a little bit iffy, it's something you're not sure about, better to just throw it out because we really want to be able to give the vendors what they're looking for and what they've asked for because that's what's going to earn us the best price back for the materials. So in general, um, items that are recyclable, they're looking for corrugated cardboard. So corrugated cardboard, you know, it's got the texture to it, bigger boxes, um, pretty standard. These items, um, 
usually to make space at home, it's best to just break them down. They also like them to be broken down when they're accepted because it just makes it a lot more room in the facility. On the next page here with the colors, you'll kind of get a rundown of each material and then specifically what is expected of them. So starting with the card cardboard, flattening them down. If they have tape on them, that's okay. You don't have to scrape off all of the packaging tape and pull all of that off. It's pretty flexible with that. Um, no wax boxes or your greasy, messy pizza box. Uh, it's probably the most common corrugated cardboard that will be coming into your home. Uh, if it's got a lot of grease, if it's dirty, you kind of have to think of it as it's being sold to someone else to be used. So it needs to be in decently well conditioned. Um, if it's very greasy, if it's very dirty, if it's wet, it's not going to make a very good recyclable product. And it could cause, pro cause problems in the process. So especially when we're talking about like plastics, steel and tin cans, aluminum cans, these items need to just be rinsed out and cleaned. They don't have to be totally scrubbed and you know, absolutely perfect, but clean. Uh, if you think about you know, the amount of flies that would be drawn to it, if nobody washed their, their pieces out, if nobody washed any of their cans out, it creates issues with vermin, it creates issues with smell. But for the most part, if all of these things are clean, transfer station smells pretty clean. It smells like paper, it smells like cans, uh, but making sure that you're just rinsing them so that you don't have that food residue. It's going to help out the people at the transfer station. It's going to help out the vendors down the road. Uh, so a lot of the notes, I think the most important category to look at on this page is going to be the notes, because that just kind of tells you if there's any special exceptions for the items. Um, for the most part, it really opens things up. So cardboard, flattening it down, tape, that makes it easy. Mixed paper is going to be just about anything except for waxed boxes and the corrugated cardboards. So that's all of your junk mail, that's old magazines, old newspapers, any of your mixed paper egg cartons. All of those types of items can go into the mixed paper. I need to. All, all food and cereal boxes. So yep. this is mixed paper, not cardboard. Right. Yep, and cardboard, the tubes from yeah, yep. paper towel tubes. If it's a little heavier feeling, even if it's a heavier feeling paper, mixed paper, not the corrugated cardboard. Yeah, corrugated has to have that wavy interior that you see that separates the two layers. So the thinner cardboard is all just mixed paper. Yeah. And that'll probably be, that and plastics tend to be the largest categories. Do those go into a bailer or do you yes. have to be okay. yeah. So they don't have to be cut down to a certain size? No, I mean, I can tell you today we ran the baler for the first time, which was interesting, and there were some ginormous, people bought some really big TVs at Christmas, and some of the boxes that came in were huge. Um, so, you know, if they're enormous, yeah, it'd be wonderful if you sliced it in half for us, but we're dealing with it. Um, but yeah, there were some enormous boxes that came in. Um, you know, the, the, the belt is only so wide, so sometimes they get stuck in the baler, you know, and it shuts down, and we have to open it up and get them down, so. But it's not like they need to be cut into little, you know, one foot sections or anything. Yeah. For general, generally what you're going to produce, you know, smaller. Uh, the other nice thing about the mixed paper is that with this vendor, we don't have to worry about removing every single staple, every single paper clip, every single um, little plastic piece from the window envelope. So your junk mail can just go right into, you know, four bills, whatever you want to toss out, you can go right into your mixed paper. But you don't have to worry about every single staple. Um, I remember when I first started recycling, I was like, okay, every, every little piece of metal, everything's going to be perfect. Um, an exception to this would be things like metallic wrapping paper or holiday cards that have beads and bows and glitter and all kinds of stuff on the outside. Really looking for straight paper. <coughs> they will take wrapping paper as mixed paper if it's pretty clean and removing the bows, removing any miscellaneous doodads that are on there, and then if it's not like that real heavy metallic kind of almost plasticky uh, wrapping paper, regular run-of-the-mill wrapping paper, as long as the bows and everything is off is okay. Um, but just trying to stay away from the glitter and the other, other elements and mixed elements that may come in. For the most part, if it's, if it's mixed paper at all, it's going to end up in the waste. So this is something that someone brought in earlier. It's metal aluminum on the bottom, and it's kind of a cardboard on the inside. 
So you would think, oh, okay, well this might be mixed paper, this might be aluminum. If it's a single unit with mixed elements, it's gonna have to go into the household with the trash. Um, so even though this has paper, it's not, and it's actually kind of coated on the inside, this is not gonna qualify, and anything that's mixed like that, you don't know how mixed and integrated the materials are. So you're looking for more like straight cardboard, straight paper, straight plastic. Anything that's a combination or anything kind of weird, set aside, set in household trash, or contact the recycling center and they can let you know for sure. With tissue boxes, I do have to peel off the plastic little thing that, do I need to do that? I'm assuming no, because window envelopes are okay. Um, that little it's small kind of amount of plastic, yeah, it's yeah, not okay. enough to cause problems. Okay. Um, I mean, something <coughs> like this is going to cause problems. Um, a tiny amount of plastic. Uh, on the note of tissues, though, tissues, toilet paper, paper towels, whether or not they're dirty, or most of them will be dirty, that is all household trash. Um, please do not put your used paper towels into the recycling, um, tissues into recycling. Technically, it's paper, it's dirty paper, um, it's not pleasant. So keeping that in mind when you're going through the paper. Also, waxed boxes. So any of the waxed boxes that you may get orange juice in, your orange juice cartons, sometimes they sell, you know, beans and different items in those little waxed boxes, that's all going to be house full trash. So anything that kind of has that waxy feel to it, if you can scrape away at the side and anything comes off, it's going to be house full. Molly, well, what about staples in the corrugated? Staples in the corrugated. I think that's fine. They didn't say anything about taking that out, so okay. you're saying like the, the huge that's ones, big, yeah. The real big staples. Yeah, I mean, I can look again once we get some bales made and we talk to our vendor about that. I can find out, and it's, you know, as we go through this, you know, and if we change vendors, you know, some stuff may change. You know, this is these are the basic rules to get us started. Um, so no one has told us we had to remove that, but I mean, that's something I can I can ask them. Assuming that they're probably okay. Um, a big thing about plastics. <coughs> No caps, no lids, no covers. So if you have, and just kind of take that to heart as a universal rule, uh, with the plastics, they're looking for plastic containers. They're not necessarily looking for this packaging, even if it might have the correct number. We're checking on this type of stuff, but right now they've specified um, containers. So that's bottles, jugs, jars, that type of thing. Miscellaneous packaging, toy packaging, electronics packaging. This could be mixed plastics, even if one side is stamped. Often they're not stamped at all. So to just make things a little easier for the plastics to start with, it's jugs, jars, and bottles that are number one, two, five, and seven. Molly, that bottle doesn't have a number on it. This one does not? Yeah. I think you're right. I picked a bad example. Um, I'll have to check on this one. Sometimes it's funny. There's a little label that says how to recycle, but this one does not have a number. So always double check the numbers for your bottles. A question. So the lids can't go. What about the rings? Rings are okay. So lids and covers, because this is a different plastic from here. The lids do have to go into household trash. This little plastic ring here, you can leave it on. Labels, you can leave on. You don't have to cut all of this off and strip it down. That small amount is not going to cause problems. Okay, because, yeah, the rings are usually made out of the same thing as the lids. Yeah, That's because it's I, yeah. just a small amount, they don't mind that. But they really do not want the whole caps in there as well. So, so even on bigger containers, like even juice containers. or whatever, the rings are okay. Yep, rings are okay. If Thank you, you want to take the time to cut them off, no, go for it. That's um, why I asked that yeah, question. Yeah, you don't have to, though. Um, but the lids and the covers <laughs> for most <laughs> items are going to end up into the trash. Even the milk bottles? Even so. milk caps. Yeah, yep. they said Saturday, <laughs> my finger told cool. us just take the caps off and throw everything in. The caps as well? Yeah, that's no. what they told me on Saturday. But okay, yeah, I no, think the, caps should, so. the caps should go. We have trash bottles right there. So yeah. big, big. They should have said in our, that the that's why there's barrels right next to plastic. Yep. So you can take the cap off, trash the cap, and throw it in. Okay. Yep. So as a rule, just generally caps. Um, so 
something that had come up earlier was like the little caps that go on top of your whipped cream containers or aerosol cans. Caps are going to go into hazardous or household waste for now. Right now, we're sticking with just the correctly numbered um, plastic bottles, plastic jugs, plastic containers. Um, other items that do not count as the correct type of plastic are thin plastics, so plastic bags, plastic wrap, bubble wrap. All of these items do not go into the plastics. That's all household waste. So you're only looking for ones, twos, fives, and sevens containers. All together? All together. Those one, four two, five, go, and seven. You can have one bin for those four. Yep. Okay. Yep. So all of your plastics, which is going to be all of your ones, twos, fives, and sevens with your containers and your jugs, all of those plastics can go together. Same as all of your mixed papers can go together. You don't have to separate out, you know, your junk mail from your magazines, from your newspapers, from your egg cartons. All mixed paper can go together. Steel and tin cans. We're not looking at paint cans, aerosol cans. That would probably end up being um, either universal waste or household hazardous waste. Uh, steel and tin cans is the coffee cans, your you know, French beans, regular um, run-of-the-mill cans. Other thing with those is that you also don't have to take the labels off. So that's something that some facilities require you to take the labels off and crush them down. You don't have to do that. They just need to be clean. So rinsing them out, you can include the lid right inside there. So if you cut the, that metal lid off, put it inside the can, and you're good to go with that. Um, aluminum cans, specifically and almost exclusively beverage cans. So anything weird like aluminum foil, pie plates, pet food containers is not going to be part of the aluminum can category. Aluminum cans is just your beverage cans for now. So that's just your standard aluminum can. I do believe the pet food containers can go in with steel and tin, and tin though. So if you do have a cap that you dote on, so um, I amass a lot of little plastic cans and little um, metal tins, but that would be the tin, not the aluminum cans. Awesome. Another question that came up earlier that I thought was a good question was um, expired food. So expired soup cans or anything like that. Um, if it's all together, it has to go in the trash. If you want, you open it up, dump the food out, rinse it out, and then you can recycle it. But you can't recycle an expired food container with the food in it. So it just kind of makes an unpleasant surprise when they're packaging. Yeah. 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 Uh, and a little thing to remember, so with the, teal, the steel and the tin cans, um, the aluminum cans, steel and tin is magnetic. A magnet will stick to it. Aluminum will not. So if you have kind of an unusual aluminum can that comes up, I always have my bins in my kitchen, and I've got tons of magnets on the fridge. A quick check with the magnet will let you know whether it's steel or tin, which would be magnetic, like your regular canned goods, or the aluminum. So doing that little check is um, pretty handy. Glass. Glass bottles and jars. So they're not looking for light bulbs. That would be universal waste, and that you can give directly to the transfer station attendants, and they'll take care of separately. Automotive glass. Um, any kitchen glass, your Pyrex dish that you draw, any of those materials needs to go into your household waste. This is just glass bottles and jars. So, you know, if you drop your mom's china or her glasses or Pyrex mixing bowl, that's not going to count. What about labels on glass? Labels on gla glass is fine. Okay. Yep. Um, if you want, you can soak them with hot water, but for the most part, it's no lids. Labels okay. Um, so even with the glass, um, any of those metal lids, I think that would end up in steel and tin. Um, so your salsa container, your salsa cover, glass would go in one, and then the steel and tin lid. But all plastic lids are going to be <coughs> in the lids. And then everything else for the trash, um, if it's yard waste, hazardous waste big weird items like that toaster that you broke, that's not going to be going in with your household waste. That would be in a different category. So anything that's not recyclable or weird is probably going to be in the household waste. And we'll go a little bit over um, household waste, how we can reduce some of that. Uh, real quick, streamlining and recycling. 
One thing that's going to really help when you go to drop off is having a number of small labeled containers. So instead of having that one gigantic recycling bin that you put everything into and then you're standing there trying to figure out which door to fit your stuff into when you get there, having separate bins from the get-go makes it so much easier at drop off. And Megan made a great little handout here that lists the orders of the bays. So as you are getting all of your stuff organized, you can even put your piece, your boxes in your car in order of the bays. So they've got a plan to kind of have a couple of different rows that people can pull through to drop off. Hopefully we'll have some lines painted and everything there to make it a little bit easier for people, but it's easiest if you've got everything sorted, ready to go, rather than just having a large bulk amount of stuff. So a um, couple of ideas for that, having separate baskets for your different types of you know, coordinated paper, mixed paper, or these tall stackable tote boxes with little pull-out drawers are really handy. They don't take up much room in your house. You can label them clearly on the front. And then once one fills up, you can just pull the drawer out, toss it in your car, and you're good to go. Reusable bags are also very handy for toting your recyclables around. Um, papers fit very, very well into there, as well as bottles. So loading up your tote bags, then you can just pick it up by the handles and drop it off as handy. What I found with separated plastics or separated recyclables is the smaller and more portable the containers are, the easier I found it personally. But if you generate a lot of one material, you may need a larger container. It doesn't matter what you bring it to the transfer station in, as long as it's separated. So just a um, little picture of the bays. Uh, the same picture is at the top here. So it just gives you an idea of Really nice, big, open, clearly labeled um, areas. If you have any questions, service attendants are always there. I tend to have like a little bag or a box of my like miscellaneous, not really sure what to do with pieces. So if it's a slower day, probably midweek, probably not Saturday, that would be a great opportunity to be like, hey, what's this? Where does this go? And they can answer your questions. First couple of times might be a little bit harder just kind of getting used to the system, but the more you go and the more you use it, the easier it gets. It's one of my favorite pictures. Um, so very nice, clearly organized bins ordered in the order of the bays at the recycling center. Makes it super easy. Pull up, grab the bin that you need, and you're ready to go. But again, you can bring it in whatever containers work best for you. Some people will bring paper, all of their paper inside of a paper bag, because then you can just take the entire container and your entire carry thing, toss it all in. Um, same with cardboard. If you have a lot of corrugated cardboard and a corrugated cardboard box, dump it out, break it down, throw it all in, and then you've got room in your car. So actually bringing the recyclables, you can do pretty much anything you'd like. So real quick overview, household trash. Household trash is everything left over after you pull your recyclables out. That's your plastic bags, your dirty items, food waste, disposables, um, any of those wax paper cartons, and your food wrappings. So there's a really good outline, again, on the back side of the household trash. So, Coated paper items, dishes or baking glass that's broken, disposable items, juice pouches, uh, linen foil, any fabrics that may come up, all of that is going to be in your household waste. A um, couple of things that are really, really great about household waste is that even after you pull the recycling out, you can still reduce your household waste down even further. So if you're finding that those big bags are still heavy to carry, there's a lot of little things that you can do to help reduce that household waste, especially now knowing what is or is not recyclable. Um, what about kitty litter? That would be household waste. Okay, because yeah. it has a plastic bag. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, that would just leave it, leave it bagged up and yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> well bagged. Yes. All right. Um, so some easy steps for reducing your household trash. One of the biggest culprits in trash is plastic bags. Um, this is from one shopping trip for two people going to Hannaford's. So generating this every single week, it adds up really quick. 
The Guilford Recycling Center does not recycle plastic bags. There are some drop-offs at Hannaford and Shaw's that you can bring some of these bags into. Better yet, if you switch to reusable bags, that really cuts down on the amount of plastic waste you're going to be generated. So one of the things that I tend to do is I leave all of my bags in the back of my car. If I leave them at home, I always forget to grab them before I run out. But I have that entire tote and I just stuff it behind my passenger seat and it's ready to go whenever I need it. Something else that I found to be really, really handy reducing the plastic waste are these reusable produce bags. So this is just something that I think I ordered these ones online or picked them up from a local store. It's a fine mesh, weighs almost nothing, but because all of those thin, thin plastic produce bags that you may pick up at Hannaford, that's all trash. None of that's recyclable. And if you only need to just transport your food from the store to your house, reusable bags like this are really, really helpful. They're also pretty thin, so you're not gonna have any issues when you go to checkout, um, keying in the number or doing anything else you need there. These come in a lot of different sizes and styles, and uh, that's just one of my favorite things. And that whole bundle just goes right in with the rest of my recyclable bag, or reusable bags. Um, and then they're just always there if I need them. It makes it really easy to put things away, too, because I can just pick them up and throw them wherever I need them. But I know I'm reducing the plastic that way. A big portion of household waste can also be disposable items. So that's your coffee cup, any of the you know, leftover plates, dirty plates from doing Christmas parties, all of these single-use items end up really increasing the amount of household trash that you generate. Even something as simple as paper towels. It's something that's really easy, you don't really think about it, but that's all adding to your household trash. So if you're interested, there's a lot of different options that are out there. Switching from paper towels to reusable cloths or unpaper towels to use as napkins, something like this. When you're finished, you toss it in the laundry and you're not adding to the amount of household waste. Reusable coffee filters, same idea. It's something simple that you might not think about, but a paper coffee filter is going to end up just in the household trash. Something reusable that you can get more and more uses out of. And then just in general, trying to stay away from those single-use disposables, plastic baggies, um, they're really easy, they're really convenient, but they're really only used for maybe a portion of your day, maybe even only a few minutes. And this cannot be recycled. This is just going to be going directly into your household trash. So if that's something that you're really interested in, switching to reusable containers. I live off of mason jars. 90% of my stuff just goes right into mason jars. Take them out, throw them in the dishwasher, you're good to go. Something like reusable food wraps, where aluminum foil and plastic wrap is not recyclable here in Guilford. Options like reusable beeswax wraps. So this is a piece of canvas that's been coated with beeswax. I can wrap sandwiches in it. I can cover my foods with it. Um, just works really well, and I don't have to worry about what do I do with all these wads of aluminum foil and plastic wrap. Um, reusable plastic lids. This is something else that eventually will end up in the household trash, but I can get 10 times as many uses out of this as I would with plastic wrap. So something that just goes over and covers covers your items. Uh, and then composting. Composting is another option if you really want to reduce your household waste. It lightens the load on your bag. Um, I can talk for hours about compost, so if you have more questions about that and you want to explore that, I'm happy to talk to you about that. Uh, and then the biggest thing to just help reduce you your household waste is just mindful shopping. It's just paying attention to what you're buying. If you know that a plastic orange juice jug is going to be recyclable, but your waxed paper one isn't, that's going to go into the trash, maybe consider switching to the plastic jugs. Um, same things with cans. If you're used to buying your beans in the little waxed convenient boxes, but you know that those are not going to be recyclable now, that's just going to be going to the trash, considering switching to tin cans or the steel cans. There's a lot of different options out there, but now that you know a little bit about what the facility can take, um, you can kind of think about that the next time you're out shopping or if you need produce bags, um, 
how much do you want to think about that plastic and those reusable bags? Uh, yeah, I can, I can go into more of this if we have more questions, but I want to leave some time for more specific questions about the recycled items. Uh, and donation, that was another thing I had touched on. So things like um, coffee cups, gently used clothing, gently used electronics, rather than putting that into the waste stream, you could consider donations. I have a donation box next to most of my recycling bins, so if I'm holding onto something, it's like, well, I don't need this coffee cup. Instead of putting that into the household trash, it can go into donations, same with clothes. And having that out as an option next to my recycling bins, I found leads me to kind of add more to that box. Um, that paperback book, instead of throwing it in with the mixed paper where it would belong, uh, you can put it into the donation and then transfer that on and extend the life of the item. Um, all right, well, I'd 